Hello and welcome to another amazing, fantastic, and beautiful episode of the Framework of Tomorrow. I am your host, Keegan Goldfarb, and today is episode 16. Today I am going to be talking about the history of LEGO, a company that is very near and dear to my heart. I love LEGO. I've been building LEGO since I was a kid, and I still continue to build LEGOs today. I actually just got the uh, Slave One Boba Fetch ship from Star Wars today. Uh, great, amazing set so far. I haven't completed it yet, but I am a total Lego nerd and I love Lego. But today I'm going to be talking about the history of Lego and how they are continuing to build the world one brick at a time. But before I get into that, uh, I want to talk about my my sponsor here on the not only the network, but on my show as well. Uh, I'm in a network, rallynetwork.net. Go check us out there to go find some amazing podcasters, including myself, as well as uh, Donna Rom and BRCM Daily. And we're going to have a couple more coming up soon. But for now, that's uh, the ones we have on the network. Go check them out. They're amazing. They're amazing people. Our sponsor on the network is Ashley Luann K, or the Minnesota Nurse. I'm sure you've heard me talk about her. She is an amazing nurse. And if you are pursuing a higher education or want insight uh, on life as a nurse, go check out Ashley Luann K at the Minnesota Nurse on Instagram. Definitely, definitely, definitely go check her out. That helps me out and helps her out as well. And the network. It helps everyone out. Go and check her out. Give her a follow. Like some of her stuff. Tell her how amazing she is because she is amazing. All right, so today I'm going to be talking about Lego, like I said, the history of Lego, and kind of what they're doing uh, to go into the future here, and kind of what they've done, kind of what they've built, I, I would say. It's kind of ironic since, you know, that's the whole thing about Legos, they're building stuff. Yeah, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. So, before I kind of get into right in the beginning, so uh, the name Lego is an abbreviation of the two Danish words, legot. I'm pretty sure it's just pronounced Lego. Uh, I could be wrong, but it's it's literally spelled it's leg space G O D T, and it means play well. The Lego Group was founded in 1932 by Old Kirk Christensen. Uh, the company was passed from father to son. It is now owned by. Kjeld Kirk Christensen. I think I'm saying that right. I don't know a Danish accent or, you know, how they pronounce stuff, but uh, that is the current uh, person who owns it, which is the grandchild of the font founder. So it's only at the grandchild. But, but I get this. So, so 1930s. This is, this is when it started, 1932. Uh, old Kirk Christensen, he was a master carpenter and joiner uh and establishes his business in the village of Bulland. So one thing to note here about Lego is Lego was never it, it, like at the beginning, they were a toy company. They weren't, I mean, they're still a toy company today, but there weren't like the little plastic bricks we know and love today. He like, he was a wood carp, uh, wood carpenter at the time. So in, this was in Denmark in a village called Bulland and his firm manufactured step ladders, ironing boards, stools, and wooden toys. So it wasn't just toys at the beginning. He did other things, step ladders, ironing boards, stools, and wooden toys. That's kind of specific, though. It's kind of funny, uh, other than the toys. And his son at the time, uh, in 1932, he was 12. Uh, his name was Gottfred Kirk Christensen. I, like I said, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right. Starts He starts working at the business at the age of 12. So he gets put to work. The company and its products now adopt the name Lego. Like I said before, I already kind of uh, said that, but Lego, um, which means play well, but is later uh, realized that the Latin word for legot, or however they pronounce it, Lego, it means I put together. So that's kind of funny. It's kind of ironic, but it was later realized that it wasn't just, it wasn't intentional. That's just how it was. So the business manufactures its first Lego wooden duck in 1930s uh, and markets, they call it Kirk's Sand Game. It is the first construction toy they've, they made. And uh, Godfred Kirk Christensen uh, cuts old Kirk's motto, 
Only the best is good enough and hangs it up in the workshop. At this time, the Lego factory, I would say they call it, or the Lego shop has 10 employees. So there's 10 people making these toys in the 1930s. So then moving on from the 1930s to the 1940s, Denmark is occupied by the Germans. And Gottfred Kirk Christensen at the time, he's older now. He's, I think he's 17 or 18 around this time. Uh, he does not travel to Germany to study as he had planned to, but instead he becomes a manager at Lego. So it's kind of interesting um, to think about how the World War II, like the war, would have affected the creation. Well, I guess not the creation of Lego, but uh, I wouldn't say his his son was the main reason. But it, it's just interesting how things work out. So he ends up becoming the manager at Lego. Sadly, in the 1940s, though, the Lego factory burns down, but the production of wooden toys is quickly resumed after that. Uh, In the 1940s, Lego had built up to 50 employees during this time. The company produces around 200 different plastic and wooden toys in the 1940s, including automatic binding bricks, a forerunner of the Lego bricks that we know today and are only sold in Denmark at this time. They're only in Denmark right now. And Lego was also the first packaging with four uh, like four colors on the box introduced. So they kind of had some fun, colorful packaging in the 1940s. So 1950s rolls around, and Godfred Kirk Christensen, is the son of the founder, obviously, we've talked about this, old Kirk Christensen, is appointed junior vice president the day he turns 30. And then the fir- in the 1950s as well, the first ever film about Lego is shot. The photographer Christian Lund and the film is in black and white with no sound. Plastic toys now account for half of the company's output. Old Kirk's plans to expand, 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 and plan is built. It costs 3,500 DKK. I'm not sure what currency that is, but that sounds like a lot. They have their first canteen now. Um, The Automatic Binding Bricks gets their new name, the Lego Brick. Uh, The Lego, the name Lego is printed inside all of the bricks as it is still today. And I believe on the studs as well on top of the Lego bricks. The first application for uh, registration of the trademark is in the 1950s. The first foreign sales company is established in uh, Hosen. Ho- oh my gosh. Hohen well Westen did I am not even gonna say that right. Westen Germany under the name Lego Spile Warren and then I don't really know what's going on there. Um the company buys their first owned truck, their the first company truck in the fifties. The current Lego stud and tube coupling system is pa- patented and the new uh coupling principle makes models much more stable. Sadly, though, in the 1950s, old Kirk Christensen, the original founder of Lego, sadly passes away. But moving on to the 1960s, model sets uh, with complete building instructions are launched as a natural addition to existing basic and supplementary sets. So they kind of start their um, how they are today, you know, when you get a Lego set, you open it up, there's the uh, the building instructions, and they're kind of modeled after something. I mean, there's themes now, but that's kind of what they were doing with this. The Duple line is also launched in the 60s. Lego is available to 42 countries in the 60s. Um, Legoland is then opened in Bulland. I, I think I'm saying that right. Bulland. Legoland, first Legoland. Uh, so that's what happened in the 60s. Moving on to the 70s, there's a thousand employees at Boland. The license agreement with Samsonite ends in the U.S. and the information of public relations department is established. Uh, 1.8 billion Lego bricks and other elements had been produced at this time. So it's been 30 or uh, sorry, 40 years now and 1.8 billion Lego bricks. Well, I guess compared to when they started making the Lego bricks, which was in the 50s, it's only really been 20 years. So 1.8 billion Lego bricks in 20 years. That's a lot. A new single 
Lego logo replaces the various logos that had been used until now. Uh, the new Lego y- logo unifies all the company's products under one banner. The first sales to Eastern Europe happens in the 70s here. Uh, Lego USA is established in Brookfield, Connecticut, which I believe is later moved. So I don't think it's there anymore. German psychologist Karen Karen Gossman, Grossman sorry, writes the book Machmer aus Lego. It is a study of 200 children and their play with Lego bricks. Uh, Legoland, wow, Lego is opened in many other countries. Uh, the Mount Rushmore replica, replica is created in the Legoland Park. Uh, Kajild Kirk Christensen is appointed the president and chief executive officer uh, in Lego. And then the 80s, we have 3,700 employees worldwide. Uh, Lego continues to spread throughout the world, coming to places such as South Africa, Brazil, and Korea. The brick logo is developed. They have, uh, towards the end of the 80s, they have around 6,000 employees. So that's a crazy growth. That's what? What did I say? Oh, 3,700 at the start. And towards the end, it was 6,000. So they rapidly grew then. And Lego products are then selling towards the end of the 80s in 150 markets. That is nuts how fast they grew just in the 80s. Uh, The 1990s. 90s (laughs) the lego group is now one of the world's 10 largest toy manufacturers the only one in europe uh the others are american japanese but that's that's still nuts 10 the world's 10 largest toy manufacturers they're in the top 10 in the 90s uh www.com uh what am i talking about www.lego.com is launched and Legoland California opens up in the 90s as well. Those that, that was towards the end of the 90s when computers uh, really started getting their grasp and into the arms uh, <laughs> arms and hands of um, people all over the world. In the 2000s now coming along here, the Lego Group signs the UN Global Compact Initiative for Lego Lego minifigures who represent real life persons or characters from books, movies, or TV series. The yellow facial coloring is replaced by a more authentic skin color, facial expression, and hairstyle. So before that, they were all um, like a yellow brick, but then they changed that to more of a um, skin color representing who the Lego person was and kind of have more hairstyles come along this time as well. 5,000 employees are in... Uh, are employed at Lego in the 2000s. The Lego group announces plans to outsource major parts of production to external partners. The Lego group celebrates its 75th anniversary on the 10th of August in good shape. Lego club. So the Lego club uh, was an online, or it still is, I believe an online kind of catalog and update thing. And it's online as well because they and um, they send you a catalog in the mail. I used to get these all the time. They had 2.6 million members towards the end of the 2000s. The Lego Group at the end of the 2000s is also now one of the world's fifth largest toy manufacturers in terms of sales. So from the 90s to the 2000s, they climbed five in the top. They're in the top five. They are the fifth largest manufacturer. In 2010, well, the 10s, the, that's so weird to say. I Every single time I say it, I'm like, that's so weird saying 10s because now it's in the 20s for 2020, you know what I mean? Uh, the online game Lego Universe launches. Oh my goodness. I remember when this happened. This was the coolest game ever. Like everyone was playing it. If you didn't play this game, like you weren't cool. You didn't have to pay for it though, but I remember just begging my parents. I'm like, please, please, I want to play. Um... It was a great game. They ended up closing it down like a year later. Actually, it wasn't a year later. It was like three years later. uh, Just because they couldn't. They wanted to focus more on other things. Legoland's uh, Florida opens. The world's largest Legoland park. I remember when that happened as well. In the beginning of February, the Lego movie premieres in a number of countries. uh, In 2015, I think. 
15, 16, something around there. Or was it 14? I don't remember. That was, it was a good movie. I loved it. I, I went to my, I went to that movie with my friends and we were like, dude, this is amazing. This is the coolest movie in the world. <laughs> they also came out with a Lego Batman movie later and uh, the Lego movie two. I can't remember if that was this year though. I think it was last year. So I think that still counts in the tens. And then at the end of the tent or towards the end of the tens, um, the number of employee exceeds 18,000 employees and represents more than 70 nationalities. So that right there is the history of Lego. And you might be wondering, you're like, all right, so your podcast is about using the framework of history to evaluate the world of tomorrow, right? So how, how is Lego going to build into this? So I wanted to kind of talk about Lego because Lego has been a massive, um, I guess, inspiration personally for me. And I know for a couple other people, I really love building stuff and it like my, uh, imagination and stuff really was gr- I real I wanted to be an architect for the longest time because of Lego not even kidding you and I still love like I'm in construction uh, as well so I've built like decks and stuff it just really gave me a passion for that and they Lego just really continues to make their amazing product and encourage kids to have an imagination as well as providing thousands of jobs across the globe And Lego is a fantastic example of how a toy company and a dream can really come true and provide an amazing and inspirational product. I love Lego. They're so cool. That is the main reason I wanted to make this episode. I hope you as the listener who is listening to this, either um, you love Lego as well, and that's why you clicked on this because you're like, whoa, Lego's in the name. Um, Or you're like, wow, I really didn't know that Lego was that influential in your personal life and in the lives of others and just how how they've grown as a company and yeah yeah that was, it's just it's so cool so i really hope you enjoyed this episode uh, as always i have a random history fact at the end of the day this one actually has to do with lego it's just a couple random facts i i threw in here at the end so i got three here i got three so if you laid end to end the number of lego bricks sold in one year uh, you would reach over five times around the globe. So in one year, if you laid end to end the number of Lego bricks that were sold that year, it could go. It would go around the globe five times. That is a lot of Lego bricks. Uh, second one, there are eighty six Lego bricks for every person on Earth. What? What's? Th- I wonder what even the math of that is. You should. You should check that out. So I think there's. How many people are on the planet Earth? Is it like, do we have 3 billion? Is it 3 billion now? I don't even know. Is more than that? Probably more than that. I don't even know what I'm saying. But you should do that math. Times 86. Do that. Uh, And then the third one, Lego sells over 400. Oh, I've heard this one before. Lego sells over 400 million tires each year, which makes Lego the largest tire manufacturer in the world. That is so funny. That Lego, a toy company, is the largest toy or tire manufacturer in the entire world. I am sorry, Goodyear, and um, oh, I can't remember the other one. Yeah, you guys are just get on their level. Like you just need to create more tires. Come on. Anyway, I hope you. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. This was a fun episode to put together and to talk about. This was so much fun. And make sure to check me out at the Framework of Tomorrow and. Um, if you have thought or on Instagram, I'm sorry, I'm messing up now. And if you have any thoughts or questions, send them to the framework of tomorrow at gmail.com. Definitely go on iTunes. If you're listening on iTunes right now, subscribe to me, um, on iTunes, give me five stars, give me one star, just give me a star. Uh, it helps me a lot. And iTunes kind of sees that and they're like, Oh, look, he's getting, uh, people that are interacting with his podcast. We should, uh, let other people see it more. That's kind of how it works. So definitely go and do that. And uh, if you didn't know, I upload every Monday and Wednesday at 5 a.m. So be sure to watch out for that. Make sure to look for the episode coming on Wednesday this week. Because it's Monday today that this will be airing. And have a fantastic rest of your day. And tune in for next, well, I guess on Wednesday, for another fantastic episode of The Framework of Tomorrow.